It's 1.30 p.m. in Lagos, 12.30 p.m. in London and in Accra, Ghana. And we're bringing you markets, analysis and insights on Business Incorporated live from Channels TV. And yes, what's coming up on the program. Ghana set to hold rates as country awaits debt restructuring deal. Mozambique approves $80 billion for new energy transition strategy. The African Development Bank approves $131 million to promote private sector development and economic diversification in Egypt. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Will Ivong. Let's break it down now, starting with Africa markets. We see NGX trading in the green at intraday's up 0.34%. South Africa, however, on the other end, is on the, in the green, red territory, 0.27% starting off the week. Not so great, but let's look at Egypt, how they performed at intraday. We see Egypt up at intraday, 1.91%, still bullish there. And we see Kenya closing Friday's session in the green as well. Now we flip over to the Middle East. Let's see how they did at intraday. The Middle East is mostly mixed sentiments there. We see the Abu Dhabi index, 0.42% up. Dubai, 0.06% up. We also see Saudi and Qatari indexes also trading in green and red territory at intraday. So let's see if the markets will perform better at the close of the bell. Now we see in Germany, the budget crisis is putting government borrowing to the test. But we're bringing in uh, Chipunda Chimbelu now to give us the details about that. Chipunda, what's the latest on this? Thanks for having me. Well, Will, just as a reminder, this budget crisis started two weeks ago when a decision by Germany's constitutional court blew a 60 billion euro shortfall in the country's budget. And the constitutional court ruled that the government cannot reallocate 60 billion euros from an emergency fund uh, that was, you know, intended to fight the pandemic to the government's climate change fund. Now, with that ruling, other funding was also put into doubt, including the future of the 200 billion euro economic stabilization fund. Now, that was designed to help finance energy price controls with most of the money earmarked for this year and 2024. So the latest news now is that the finance minister has imposed a budget freeze because he wants to secure the electricity and gas price controls that have already been paid out with a supplementary budget this year. Uh, what's, uh, how will this affect the German economy? Because you know, either way, it's just going to have international repercussions. Well, if Germany cannot borrow more and it reduces investment and spending, that's something that will be felt by its European neighbors and, of course, the rest of the world. And both the IMF and the OECD have issued warnings about the effects of Germany's budget crisis. The IMF's director, Kristalina Georgieva, said that Germany needs to invest in infrastructure and also the green restructuring of the economy. She also said that the investments are needed by Europe's largest uh, economy and because because that's also because other countries like the U.S. are also taking on debt to modernize their economies. The U.S., in fact, has the Inflation Reduction Act, which is worth nearly $740 billion. Now, that's why experts are warning that being unable to borrow to fund green innovation and infrastructure could make Germany less competitive. Now, the challenge for this government is getting the three parties in the coalition to agree on a plan. And if they decide to lift the debt break, they will also need the support of the opposition Christian Democrats because it needs a two-third majority, because the government needs a two-third majority in the Bundestag to, put, to get this moving. Uh, that's, of course, lifting the the debt break. But the Christian Democrats are, of course, against lifting the debt break. They propose cutting social spending and postponing a heating bill, which aims to speed up, um, you know, the phasing out of fossil fuels. So finding a compromise will indeed be extremely daunting for the government. Mm, it's daunting indeed. But what can we expect from the markets today? It's first trading day. 
Well, European stocks are going to probably trade lower, uh, Will, and that's because, of course, uh, Asian markets declined alongside U.S. futures. Now, that is after the latest data showed that profits at China's industrial firms grew at a slower pace in October. Investment, investment investor sentiment, rather, has been dented by the strong foreign outflows in China. So investors uh, will be also watching uh, for European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde speak in the EU Parliament later to see uh, what the interest rate environment will look like for the Eurozone going forward. And they will also be keeping an eye out on the U.S. Uh, data in terms of new home sales and building permits for October. Thanks so much, Chiponda Chimbelu, for that update from Berlin. Now we come down to Nigeria, where in October this year, the Ikeja Electricity Company announced upgrades and asked its customers to link the STS meters with their national identity number. The latest deadline, which was November the 15th, has elapsed, and some Nigerians on X, previously known as Twitter, are complaining about their inability to update their prepaid meters before the November deadline as stipulated by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission NEC. Mr. Sunday Oduton, Executive Director, Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, ANED, and spokesman for the discos, joins us. And good afternoon, sir. It's good to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's, I'm just going to ask a question that is on the mind of many Nigerians, and I'm speaking, I believe, what people want to know. Why is it so important, or why is it so necessary for the NIN to be linked to the prepaid meters? Thank you very much. Um, it is very important for us to know who our customers are. And it's also very important for our customers to also deal with us with a peace of mind, whereby you have a meter, you live in a particular property, we know who you are, you know who we are, and then we're able to most times even deal directly with you. By linking your national identity number with your meter, what we're now doing is to ensure that we're able to deal with our customers on an individual basis, and then we now, we're now having a system whereby we'll be able to do away with a lot of the problems that we had in the past, issues of identity theft, issues of people leaving properties with huge debt and then moving away to another place. New tenant now have to pay for the previous tenant's uh, debt and so many other things. So it is in the interest of the customers as well as in the interest of the operators. So it is meant to make things better. And I do understand, we appreciate and uh, understand the initial glitches that is going on. And, and I need to say here, that we're not just, just starting at Ikeja. We started over one year ago in just Disco. And now it is working uh, very well. So we just want to appeal to our customers to be patient with us as we're dealing with the initial glitches that are happening on the platform. Okay, speaking of initial glitches that yes. you know, customers are experiencing, it's, um, a lot of customers have complained about linking this NIN, but still there's a code that they said was sent to customers after they link it to be able to vent, to be able to, you know, buy electricity tokens and get energy. But they're yet to get that, the delay in getting these codes. Why are we seeing these delays? And how quickly would that be resolved? All issues to do with delays, especially that have to do with the code, are also being looked into. And we're trying our best to ensure that we minimize the inconveniences to the customers. And talking about the code, um, the meters that we use in Nigeria, they are called STS prepaid meter. There's an ongoing global need to do a technical update. So that technical update requires every customer that owns a prepaid meter to obtain what we call KCT, which is key chain token. That token, I believe, is the is the code you are talking about that you need to get an input into the uh, meter. Again, uh, a lot of people have been able to they've been able to do it. We are also aware of some issues uh, with some customers, and we are working around the clock to ensure that all over the country we solve this problem. So it's not just an Ikeja issue alone. It's a national problem, 
and we're aware of it and we're working very hard to I would just apologize to our customer for any inconvenience. But these things are very important. The one with the software update is a global thing. You have to update the meter. You don't have to go and get another meter, but you have to get this thing done so that your meter can continue to work. Okay, so you say it's uh, how quickly do you think this will um, be resolved and why are we seeing these issues arise? Why are some customers able to get the tokens and you know, be able to update their um, NIN to the meters and also get electricity? Why are others not able to do so? What is the cause of this problem? It is mainly technical. I mean, the platform on which this new upgrade is being carried out, sometimes, that's why I call it the initial glitches. I mean, these are things that are uh, mainly and most times beyond us. It's not as if we'll be happy for our customers to have to deal with this all the time. But like I said, even this morning, we've solved some problem. This morning, even right here in the studio, a staff of this channel TV spoke with me, out of four people living in a block of four flats. They've been able to sort out one, remaining three of them, and I assure him that we'll make sure that those three are also um, done. So what about those people who actually get these tokens, but they are still not able to vend? The tokens don't work. How, what, what is, what's, what's the problem there? In, well, in those few cases where, okay, you know, even with banks, we get what they call OTP, a one-time passcode. When they send it to you, it expires after a particular time. So you request for another one. So in cases, in those cases where customers have issues with the token, I will implore them to please report that again to their next and nearest um, disco. They will sort it out for them. We've, we've made efforts, Ikeja and others are doing it to ensure that we even now have more staff to deal with this particular problem. Because once we resolve it now, everything going forward will be seamless. Okay, but some people have been to their discos. You said they should just go to the nearest discos. Some customers have been to their discos. But they tell them, keep trying. It will work later, you know, just keep trying. And they, they don't get the resolution that they want. So how, if, if they don't have confidence in going to the discos, how will the problems be resolved? Well, I think it has come to a point that all of us Nigerians should begin to trust our service providers. And our service providers too should begin to trust us as customers. The issue of saying keep trying, I'm sure, simply means that the process, because sometimes some of this thing has to do with the network, and when you talk about network, you are talking about telecom providers, and we all use phones. In some cases, a particular service provider, you, you can't get to make a call, you have to use, most Nigerians have more than one phone. It is for the same reason that this sort of glitches technically happens, but I'm not going to sit down here and give you excuses. And that's why I apologize. And I'm asking Nigerians to please be patient with us as we deal with this. This problem will go away. It is something we've done elsewhere, and we know we'll get this done. Mm -hmm. But I know that what customers want is you want to try once, seamlessly everything gets done. But any time you try something and it doesn't work, it's only natural that you feel unhappy. So I'm sorry this is happening, but I assure you that Ikeja, Eko, Ibadan, and all other electricity companies are working day and night. And if you have anybody in jobs, ask them. We've done it there. We believe that we can get this, this thing done so that we can provide better service to our people. Okay, speaking of uh, working around the clock, day and night, and uh, providing better services, their customer care number or customer care line that Nigerians can, customers of Ikeja Disco can reach out to, that you can provide to Nigerians so they can reach out to that uh, number and say, oh, we've got this problem, and they get their problems resolved. Yes, anybody who has a phone and access to the internet, just go on Google, type Ikeja Electric. That brings out uh, a link to their website. There are numbers there. And there are numbers you can call 24 hours a day. And a lot of people have done this. This is not rocket science. You will get them, and they will tell you what you need to do. And if there's any other thing they need you to do, they will tell you, but I assure you that you can get to speak to Ikeja or any other disco. And so I just want to ask a question. Do you yes. think that if Nigerians get a bit of difficulty, that there's any room to bypass this process? Do you think that is happening 
as we speak? As we speak, we have substantial energy theft in the system. Even before this issue of upgrade happens, or issue of software update, or linking in with, I can tell you that 60% of meters, prepaid meters in Nigeria, I bypass. That is theft. There are so many chiefs. That is the truth. This is not about giving excuse about my meter is not working, that's why I'm stealing energy. No. I can tell you that, number one, 40% of energy that we supply in this country has stolen. And that has affected our ability to supply more energy, to improve our service, because all these things affect our ability to reinvest in the system and deliver the service that Nigerians need. Mm. So when you have 40% energy loss, that's true illegal connection and so many illegalities, and then those who have prepared meter, they bypass it all the time. And it does not have to do with poor people's area alone. Mm. Even the Kedja GRA, even an area called Bumpai in Kano. Okay. I'm talking about GRO. Okay. Even in Jos, go to a place they call it Refid. <laughs> I can mention okay. so many people, places all over the country, and I've been there. Okay. You see this practice. I, okay. I can only implore Nigerians. Because okay. for every theft okay. in one property, okay. you are making your neighbor to pay more for electricity. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Sunday Oduton, Executive Director, Association of Nigeria Electricity Distributors and spokesperson for the discos. And being a spokesperson, we've been trying to reach the CEO of Ele Keja Electric. We do hope you can reach out to him to come and explain to Nigerians, to appease Nigerians and to speak to them. We do need his voice in this matter. Thank you so much. I'm her voice. <laughs> we are Thank sure you so anything much. you want her to say or any CEO, there are 11 of them. Okay. Instead of bringing 11 people to Channel TV, talk to me. You are talking to them. Okay. There's nothing they're going to say that I will not say. And there's things I will say that they will not say. Okay. They are ready. They are willing to come out anytime. But we're making things easy okay. and straight, streamlined and strategic for all of us. Okay. Nigerians just need to be given the right information okay. and we need to deliver the service that Nigerians need. Thank you so I'll much. I'll deliver your message. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much, Mr. Sunday Thank you. Thank for the you. time. Many thanks again. Thank you. Next, more stories from the African continent. Stay with us. This is Business Incorporated. Thanks for staying with us. Now, visitors going to Ghana will not need pre-travel visas from December the 1st, 2023 to January the 15th, 2024. Within that period, all visitors to Ghana will get visas upon arrival. The Ghana Tourism Authority made this announcement last week and says the pre-travel visa waiver is part of the government's 10-year Beyond the Return campaign aimed at encouraging Africans in the diaspora to visit Ghana. And joining us virtually from Accra, Ghana, is Mr. Akwesi Akwemang, uh, the Chief Executive uh, Officer, Ghana Tourism Authority, and he's joining us virtually from Accra. Good afternoon, sir. It's good to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, sir, this is not the first time, uh, this is not the first waiver Ghana has proposed uh, in terms of free visa entry into the country, is it? No, this is not the first time. Uh, we did the same during the year of return in 2019. And last year, in the last week of December, we did the same. But this one is a bit extensive because uh, it's starting from the 1st of December to the 15th of January 2024. And like you indicated, it is a way for us to uh, get in the numbers that we are expecting. Uh, since 2019, we have launched a project that we call December in GH, or December in Ghana. And in December, we have a lineup of several activities and events that bring the African diaspora to Ghana. And one of the bottlenecks has always been uh, visa acquisition. And so with that bottleneck out of the way, we are expecting the African family to come to Ghana. I know in Nigeria, and Nigerians don't need visas to come to Ghana already. And so we are expecting all of you <laughs> here in Accra <laughs> to be part of the Zemba in GH. <laughs> Thank you so much. But are there any specific, specific conditions or requirements for visitors to Ghana to benefit from this pre-travel visa waiver? No, not, nothing, nothing. Just pick your passport, get a flight, once you come to Accra, you get to the airport, the immigration officers will give you a visa. So it's very straightforward, very straight to the point. 
And I believe that uh, in the times past, when we had this visa on arrival, we saw record numbers. And so we are moving towards a point where it's become a permanent feature of our tourism discourse. Okay, speaking of numbers, how does the Beyond the Return campaign, how has it contributed to the overall economic growth of Ghana? Uh, very much so. We've seen uh, a surge in visitor arrivals. In 2018, we had about 700,000. Uh, when we launched uh, uh, the year of return, we crossed over the 1 million mark. And uh, when COVID came in, we dropped. But now, with the Beyond the Return and the December in GH program, we last year we had just below 1 million. This year we are targeting 1.2 million. And the records and numbers that have come in up to the third quarter shows that we'll be able to cross over the 1 million mark. And so Beyond the Return has become a clarion call for the African diaspora to come to the motherland, using Ghana as a gateway to the rest of Africa. And we believe that with all the marketing initiatives that we put in place, the efforts that we have made in terms of easing the visa uh, regime and uh, everything that we have done, talking to the airlines to increase the number of flights coming into the destination. I believe we've created the access points for people to come to Ghana. And we are very confident that we'll get the numbers. And those numbers will also rub off other African destinations because a lot of people coming in want to do multi-destination. So between Ghana, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, we started something we call the West Africa Integrated Travel. And I believe that with Ghana making that push for people to come in, it will rub off our brothers and sisters within the sub-region. Oh, speaking of rubbing off, I'm quite excited to hear that. Does this feed into the AFCFTA uh, program of free movement of persons and goods? in Africa to promote, you know, economic in integration within the region? We have been advocating that. We have been advocating that all the bottlenecks, all the challenges, all the roadblocks. I mean, if you travel on road, uh, even by flight, there are some countries that still, as an African, you need visas. We believe that we need to waive off visa for all African countries. And we've seen uh, some countries take the lead in that, Rwanda, Kenya, um, Senegal in recent times. And I believe that all of us must be interested in the AFCFTA. Ghana is host of the AFCFTA, and we believe that all these things that we are doing will clear the pathways for other countries to follow suit. And at some point in time, within the continent of Africa, we would not need anybody coming from anybody where to visit Africa. If we can move around, if Ghanaians can go to Nigeria, and Nigeria, by the way, is the second uh, inbound destination for Ghana. So. We cherish our relationship with Nigeria and we believe that if we can get more Nigerians to travel to Ghana and more Ghanaians to go to Nigeria, we wouldn't need any European to come in. The tourism within the continent will blossom. Mm. Thank you so much. We do hope tourism blossoms in Africa. Mr. Kwesi Agemang, CEO, Ghana Tourism Authority. Thank you for joining Thank us. You for having me. Thank you so much. Now, the Bank of Ghana, still there, is set to keep a borrowing cost unchanged for a second street meeting amid tame price pressures as it awaits a debt restructuring deal with bilateral creditors. According to analysts, Ghana's cooling inflation supports holding the policy rate at 30% in November. Meanwhile, Ghana expects to reach a debt relief deal in the coming week from its official creditors to qualify for further disbursements under a $3 billion international monetary fund loan program. Now, Mozambique's government has approved a strategy to reduce the nation's dependence on fossil fuels. And this is estimated to cost $80 billion to implement by 2050, a step aimed at winning finance to develop the economy. According to the first steps envisioned in the energy transition strategy approved by the Council of Ministers on November the 21st, it includes the addition of 2,000 megawatts of hydropower capacity by 2030 and expanding the transmission grid to allow for the addition of more renewable energy. The full program will be announced by President Felipe Nyusi at the COP28 International Climate Summit in Dubai. And finally, in Egypt, the African Development Bank has approved $131 million to promote private sector development and economic diversification. The program supports the Egyptian government's efforts 
through a robust public reform matrix to facilitate increased private sector development. Direct beneficiaries for the program will be the Egyptian state, private industries and agribusiness operators. Other beneficiaries are local SMEs, especially women-owned businesses. And one of the expected results is to boost private investment from 3.3% of GDP in 2021 and 2022 to 4.3% in 2024 and 2025. And that's a wrap on Business Incorporated for today. I am Will Ibang. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.